Hi, I'm Mike Stanton with Build America Mutual. I'm pleased today to be joined by Dan Workman. Dan is the portfolio manager for the new Franklin Municipal Green Bond Fund. And he's uh, been willing to take a few minutes to talk with us uh, here on the occasion of Climate Week in New York. Dan, uh, this is a, the most unusual Climate Week in our lifetimes, uh, both uh, because of the fact that it's 100% virtual. There are no live events here in New York, obviously, because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but also because it's occurring against the backdrop of so many uh, so much evidence of climate change and, and climate crisis, uh, particularly across the West Coast. So uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us now, and, and uh, thank you for being here. Sure, um, thank you. So the first question I have is, you know, while it's it's coincidental that we're talking uh, about uh, this in, in, in terms of climate week, that's not the reason why uh, you at Franklin decided to launch this fund now. What makes it the right time to start a municipal green bond fund, and what types of investors are you trying to attract uh, with the new accounts? So from an environmental perspective, we felt a good deal of urgency in trying to get this product to the market. Uh, we feel that climate change and other environmental risks are some of the greatest challenges facing humanity right now. And uh, we feel that municipal green bonds um, give folks an avenue to provide capital to the projects and programs that are on the front lines in fighting things like climate change. So in that sense, we, we felt a good deal of urgency to get this, this product to the market. Um, you know, from a behind the scenes perspective, we felt it was very important to have a good analytical framework for evaluating green bonds and a good legal and compliance framework so that we could bring a credible product to the market. It took several years um, to develop that framework and get everything right. Um, so in that sense, it's, it's been a work in progress to get to launch, um, you know, now to get to public launch now. Um, but yeah, there's, there's urgency here. And we, we think there's urgency um, out there in the investing world. And hopefully this, this appeals to those folks that, um, that share that urgency. You know, on the, on the demand side, it's it's yet to be to be known who exactly would want a green bond fund, but we think there are a lot of people out there that will want this. We think anyone that um, that is environmentally conscious, that's worried about sustainability, that's worried about the earth, could be interested in this. A lot of people think about millennials when they talk about things like green bonds and sustainability, and we we hope that that this strategy appeals to millennials, but we've also had a lot of great conversations with more mature investors who are starting to think about their legacies. And when they think about their legacies, it's, it's interesting to hear them talk about not only the wealth that they want to leave to their heirs, but they, they also are thinking about the earth that they're leaving to their heirs. Um, so there are, there are mature investors out there that are thinking more about this topic and we think this strategy could could appeal to them as well. So what's the mechanism there? How does having this opportunity uh, for an issuer, let's say, to sell green bonds to the fund uh, drive their choices in, 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 in choosing the infrastructure projects that ultimately uh, would help fight climate change? Well, that, that is a great question. I, I think for issuers, a lot of them are already thinking about the climate. They're thinking about... Um, they're thinking about the environment and they're doing, um, they're doing a lot. They're on the front lines of, of a lot of the climate change um, fight and they're, they're taking up these issues already. I think it becomes a question of focus at a certain point. Does, does an issuer want to focus its bond issue on a green project or green program? Or do they want to issue bonds in support of those projects or programs. Um, we think it's really important um, as, a, as a messaging mechanism for issuers to use green bonds, even if there may not be a, a direct identifiable financial benefit, we think it sends a great message to constituents. We think it sends a great message to investors. And it gives, it gives investors a chance to go out and, and find those investments that that align with their values. So I, I think that I think these pro, pro, projects and programs are going to happen. They are happening. Having them issued as green bonds is important 
And I think we're going to see more green bonds just to help everyone focus, right? They're going to help investors focus, issuers focus, and bring more attention to these issues that are, are huge challenges for everyone. One of the theories in the in the green bond world is that as we get more labeled green bond volume and that that establish itself as, as more of a sub asset class inside the municipal world, that that'll be a self uh, reinforcing cycle and that, that people will sell more green bonds as the as the market demonstrates its uh, appetite for them. Is that is that something you think will happen is, is, and ha does the, having the fund help uh, move us down the curve towards that? Yes, yeah, so I think it is somewhat self-fulfilling from a market perspective. There's a, a certain amount of um, certain amount of time that has to pass so that all stakeholders, investors, issuers, bankers, et cetera, can get comfortable with what goes into issuing a green bond or owning a green bond on the investment side of it. So yeah, there, there's, there's a certain amount of time that's going to go by, I think. Um, I know it probably seems like green bonds have been around for a long time, but it's just seven years in munis that, that we've had green bonds now. And that, and that makes it a, a very new, um, a new, a very new segment of the market. Um, I think you have a learning curve in terms of disclosure and we're still getting up that learning curve. Um, and a lot of this I think can be solved through engagement over time. So that's another part of what we're trying to do with this fund is um, use it as a good reason to have conversations with issuers around their green programs and green projects. And when we can, we, we encourage them to improve their disclosure, to become more quantitative in their disclosure so that everyone out there can understand um, how their projects are addressing environmental issues and hopefully increase <laughs> increase demand. And I, I think it's a matter of time before that demand really, really picks up and, and we're confident that it's coming. So you mentioned that uh, a lot of the hard work in getting the fund up and running was the need to build the analytical framework and the, the legal framework. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your approach uh, might differ or, or align with some of the international standards? And you know, are those international standards sufficient for what you're seeing in the muni market or, or did you need a different approach? Yeah, so the, the international standards, specifically the green bond principles are an excellent framework, both for issuing and evaluating bonds. And those principles really inform the work that we do um, when we identify investment candidates for our green bond strategies. Um, a, a couple things I would, I would point out. It, it's very easy for an issuer to put a green bond label um, on a bond issue. And it's also easy to say that they are complying with the green bond principles. What we wanna do is take it a step further and look at the projects or programs that are being funded and make sure that there are very clear environmental objectives and that they go above and beyond the status quo. Um, in other words, we don't want an issuer selling green bonds to fund programs that they're going to um, that they're going to see through no matter what, and that they have already been seeing through as part of the historical operations. We want to see something more than that. We want to see that there's a clear objective. We also want to see that there's a reasonable pathway for achieving that objective. And, and there almost always is, but we just don't want to take an issuer's word for it. We want to see for ourselves that there's something um, legitimate happening, that there's intentionality on on the part of the issuer, and that we can confirm that the objectives are met over time. What's your um, what's your approach to labeled green bonds and third party verification? How, how important is it that the issuer either self label or obtain a third party verification, or do you think you can get comfortable uh, through other engagement or or other reviews of what's going on in the context? Yeah, so our preference is for issuers to sell label green bonds, and, and we talked about that a little bit, but from a messaging perspective, we think it's important to have green bonds out there so that attention can be focused on what's going on with that particular bond and project and program. Um, when it comes to third-party um, verification, uh, we prefer that, that issuers use it. 
it's not a requirement for us to invest in a, in a green bond, but but we prefer it. Ultimately, it's one of many inputs that we look at when we're evaluating a green bond. And obviously, there's more credibility if you have if you have a verifier that has some technical expertise and some history and looking at green bonds, saying that they agree that the bonds are green. Stepping back from all of that, we will look at and we will buy bonds that don't have a green bond label, but the hurdle is higher and that we need to go a little bit further to verify that all the bond proceeds will be used for a project or program that has a clear environmental objective and that we can confirm that that objective is met over time. You know, one of the, one of the big um, pillars of the green bond principles is the reporting. And it's, it's critical in helping us confirm that issuers are doing what they say they're gonna do when they issue the bonds. So when you have a non-labeled bond that could be green, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge to confirm that the reporting will be satisfactory over time. Great. Well, Dan, thank you for taking the time. Uh, good luck with the uh, launch of the new fund. BAM is helping its members, cities, towns, and school districts build a sustainable future. BAM Green Star Bonds finance projects that protect and restore the environment. That means more renewable energy, efficient transportation in buildings, and clean water. Investors know BAM Green Star Bonds are financially secure and make critical infrastructure more affordable. We do this for the same reason you do. Building America sustainably. BAM. The feeling is mutual.